Wat hele wij dan? La 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 la. That's a bit more sensible. I think I got through the entire video with all that mess everywhere. Things I do to set the scene. Hi guys and welcome back. In case you didn't read the title and you're wondering what the hell is going on with all this mess, I had a request from a lovely lady. I think I can't remember when it was. It was a little while back. But the request was for me to do a powdery fragrance video. That's what we're doing today. So I rounded up all the fragrances that I have in my collection, which I think may not even be classed as powdery, but they're all powdery to me. So what is a powdery fragrance? Well, of course, it's going to be a fragrance that smells like powder, but specifically ones that kind of have that talcum powder vibe or face powder vibe, or there's other directions it goes in. To some people, a powdery fragrance will smell old fashioned, vintage, you know, a bit old hat, something your grandmother would, would smell like maybe. But to many others, at least those who appreciate perfumery, it's a a beautiful, comforting, cosy style of fragrance and clearly one that stood the test of time. And it's still as popular today in modern perfumery. In fact, I'm seeing a bit more interest in, in powdery fragrances. I'm seeing more people comment on them and talk about them. I think it's becoming a, a fashionable style of fragrance again. And fashions often do go in waves, don't they? Just recognise no powdery note being iris or oris brut which is the same thing. Um, reading up, because I had to do a bit of research before coming on here, I can't pretend to be an expert on these sort of things, you know, I have to wing it. So the oris root is the root of the iris, and iris itself, the actual flower, often doesn't even have a scent. The oris root is the iris root, and that smells powdery, but it smells like dense powdery, and people often compare it to sort of like a carroty sort of a smell, but it's very, very popular in perfumery. Then you've got violets, of course violet has a lovely powdery scent, like parma violets, kind of chalky, but still really pretty. And you've got musks, which provide powdery notes. You've got almond, which can be powdery and milky, but that can also have that powdery vibe. You've got heliotrope, which is a flower, which smells kind of almondy, but it's, again, it's that powdery almond. You've got rice powder, you've got vanilla, which goes powdery. You've also got rose, which have come off quite dusty and powdery as well. I know I've rambled on for long enough now. Let's just jump into all these fragrances because I've got loads to get through and it's going to take a million years if I don't hurry up. Um, I've got so many here. I just keep chucking more and more in this pouch because I keep thinking of ones that I haven't already included. And I've got so many damn samples upstairs. I've probably got loads more examples of a beautiful powdery fragrance I could offer you, but it will just take so long. So I'm just going with the ones that I, I, you know, I've got a little bit of experience with and have actually, you know, worn at least. Let's start with a vintage classic. So from Galant, we've got Le Blue, the Blue Hour. This is such a classic. So most people would have heard of this in the fragrance community. This one dates back to, I think, 1912. And it just smells like how you would expect a vintage fragrance to smell like this. It smells like the past, but in the best possible way. It's just this powdery, spicy, um, floral fragrance. It's got dominant notes of violet and iris. Um, there's carnation, which gives this kind of slightly spicy floral. Um, it smells like my old great great aunt, <laughs> which sounds terrible, in the best way because it's a memory inducing fragrance for me. Um, it's done so well this one, it's absolutely beautiful, it's got a softness to it, um, it's just got that lovely classic vintage vibe. I've also got the, that's the EDT, I've got the EDP here as well, um, which is the, kind of the same thing. This one's a lot stronger, a lot spicier and a lot denser. So it's just more, it's just more of that kind of scent. So that is Guerlain's Le Bleu. This is Popre Autumn. I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm really sorry. And it's from the house, I think it's Maison Violet. Is that the house? This is just a decan. Um, this is just a straight up a violet fragrance, basically. I've never really worn this one. I don't seem to vibe with it, even though I can appreciate that it is a real violet, violet fragrance. It's nice, but there's just something, I feel like it's lacking something or it's missing something. I don't know. I don't wear it very often. I occasionally, you know, go to it and try it out, but it's really not my thing. But if you love your violet, it's still one worth checking out. So that is, I'm going to try and pronounce this again. <laughs> you can read it. Look, there it is. Beautiful one from a niche house. This is Dusita. And of course, this is Splendiris. I've mentioned quite a few times now. Um, I absolutely love this fragrance. I haven't worn it enough this year. I need to start reaching for it. But this one... This has got a lovely, powdery, slightly spicy vibe, but it's also natural. This is like picking flowers straight from the garden and you've still got some leaves attached to them. There's a green element to this. 
but it's so natural and beautiful. And there's a density in here coming from orris roots. I think there's also carrot seed in here as well. But it's so natural and organic smelling. And although it's a beautiful representation of a violet iris fragrance, it's got this beautiful amber green oak, which stops it getting too powdery and too, you know, like it takes off and has no grounding. It has this beautiful density with a bit of saltiness. It's like nothing else I've tried and it is stunning. The one from Sylvain Delacorte. This is Florentina, and as you can see from the picture, it's showing you an iris. So this is, of course, an iris fragrance. It's also got musks and it's got almond. And this isn't really a heavy, powdery fragrance, but there is a powdery aspect. It's very soft. And the musks and the, that iris is giving you that powdery aspect. But actually, the almonds kind of making it quite milky and smooth. And it's a very gentle, angelic scent. But I would still consider it, you know, of the powdery variety. But it's just not dry, that's all. It's very smooth and it's enveloping and it's just so delicate and beautiful. So that is another one. That's Sylvain Delacorte's uh, Florentina. So next up is one from 4160 Tuesdays. This is Claire's Illusion. And Claire Smurfy Girlie, Miss Smurfette, is responsible for me having this fragrance. Um, and I'm so grateful for it. It is absolutely... Oh, look, now I've messed up my beautiful powdery pattern. So this is a lemon... Puff. This is a powdery, lemony, lemon puff. And it's so addictive. And it's the orris root here, which is giving you this dense, kind of uh, powdery, puffy lemon talcum powder. Not like that completely. It, this is niche. This is niche quality. You've got beautiful complexities in here, which just make it so unique and beautiful. But it is a powdery fragrance. I absolutely fell in love with this one, and I'm so happy to have it. So that is Cloud's Illusion. This is... Athalia by Parfums de Mali, and this is an iris fragrance or, or an orris root fragrance, however you want to look at it. Um, and I probably wouldn't have liked this last year, but it's become a new favourite. I can't stop wearing this and I absolutely love it. I've said before, it's my rainy day fragrance. Something about it smells like the rain, like this hazy, grey, dewy quality. And, and although it's not a dry fragrance, like I say, it's kind of hazy, gives me this sort of damp, damp, rainy thing. It's still a powdery fragrance, it's still predominantly iris. Put it into the same category as Le Bleu. It has the same kind of thing going on. It's that powdery fragrance of sort of a slight spicy pepperiness. And it's not trying to be anything more than that. But this one's a much sort of more lighter, airy version of, of Le Bleu, I would say. It's slightly more modern in its way. Probably more easy to wear. It has a slightly sexy edge to it, I think. And quite conservative. It's sort of like a serious scent. Um, but yeah, that is Athalia. And that is by Parfum de Mali. The next one's just a sample, but it's by Atelier Des Or, and it is uh, Iris Fave or Fauve. And this, of course, is an Iris fragrance. And this is a real niche. This is a expensive smelling fragrance, and I've just sprayed it on my hand. And look at the oils, the oil concentration in that. It's a hell of a lot. So that's a good thing. That means that it's just a good quality, long lasting fragrance. And this one reminds me, it's got touches of Splendor Iris in it. It's got something really, you know, dense in there kind of gives you more of a, a sensation of a texture rather than a scent. There's, I get sort of leather, fruity things, but I get this texture when I smell it, like, um, like a cushion or a, I don't know, something velvety, a little bit dusty. I find it really complex and interesting, but I do feel that it would work better on a man for some reason. I just see a man wearing this. It's got like a, a, an old generation, classy gentleman feel to it. It is really beautiful. So that is Iris Favre. Next is one that goes in exactly the same direction in its niche complexity. But it's more, I see it more on a lady. And this is by Papillon, Papillon. This is by Papillon Artisan Perfumes. And this is Bengal Rouge. I really think of Claire when I smell this one. I know this is one that she loves. And she's the reason that I, I first tried this as well. She sent me her own sample of this. And when I bought a bottle of Tobacco Rose, um, Liz, the creator, was very kind enough to send me every single fragrance sample that she has in the whole house. So I got this extra sample of Bengal Rouge. I find Bengal Rouge really hard to describe. It's so complex and so artistic. It's got so many facets. But like Iris Fav, I get a textured, a textured scent. It's like I can imagine sitting in a room full of velvety cushions. Um, and I don't know, it's like an old boudoir kind of a, uh, ambience, but there's also a fruity touch in here. According to the notes, there's no fruits in here, but I just get that nuance of like 
current buns and oh I don't know it's very strange but Bengal Rouge is inspired by the creator's cat Lizzie's cat and she wanted to give that impression of fur like stroking a cat and somehow she's done it there is this cat's fur quality in here it's so clever obviously here you can see there's orris in here so you've got that beautiful density from the orris root it's like a rich nutty sweetness from the tonka bean it's kind of love it but there's just something stopping me from from taking the plunge and buying this bottle something not quite vibing with me i don't know what it is I do appreciate it and I think it's stunning and I really recommend you try out this house and this fragrance if you wanted something really artistic and unusual so that is Bengal Rouge. So one of my fave iris fragrances is from Dior and this is Dior Amour. I just love this fragrance. This is like classy to me. This is kind of, this is probably as demure and as ladylike as I'm going to get. Um, it has a kind of a green edge. I think that's what Claire said when she first tried it and gutted that she didn't enjoy this one but I really do and it's got like a I know what she means about this green thing but for me it's more like a slightly sour fizzy facet but it is classed as a powdery fragrance three notes that I can find on this I'm sure there's more than that jasmine iris and powdery notes so it obviously is a powdery fragrance but it's not dry and fluffy it's kind of got that texture of powder but with a fizzy quality to it like sparkling and it's just so easy to wear and it's got like a ladylike elegance to it it's just so beautiful and i really enjoy this one i'd almost call it a delicate jasmine musk but without anything heady like i get headaches really easily so if anyone thinks of this as being you know if you've got jasmine and you've got musk you think of a headache this is nothing like that it's so easy to wear it really is you have to try it i love it i love dior more so that is that one so I have a sample here from Fragrance Dubois. I wasn't sure to include, include this one because it's not a straight up powdery fragrance, but on me it seems to go powdery. It is a coconut and sandalwood fragrance. But for me, I get more marzipan. I just get this sweet, dense marzipan with a touch of anise. Like that's how it comes into my nose. It's, that's just how it is. And it goes more masculine for me, but there's a powdery element to this and there is violet in here. So it could be coming from the violet. And it's the powderiness I kind of like in here. I don't love this enough to ever buy a bottle of it. It's incredibly expensive. And I think you've really got to love a fragrance du bois to commit to a full bottle. But I'm happy to have got the sample. And I have, I have worn it. Like you can see it's almost gone. It could be that there's tonka in here. Tonka can go quite powdery. But it is beautiful. It's a marzipani, slightly anise sandalwood coconut. A little dusting of some powder. So sticking with that mention of Tonga bean, oh, I just love this one is on my wish list. This is very high up on my wish list right now. So this is Guerlain's Tonga Imperial. And actually, I hardly wore this last year. I thought I'd reach for it a lot, but I didn't. It's not until it's getting warmer I'm starting to reach for it. And it really comes alive in, in the warmer weather. This is a Tonga bean, which is like a powdery roasted almond kind of a smell. Marzipan, if you like. But it comes off quite powdery. And it's absolutely stunning. So it's like a powdery almond marzipan. Um, it's not too strong. It's not too dense. It smells like money. <laughs> it smells really expensive. But it is powdery and absolutely delicious. And it smells very similar to the next fragrance, which is Dior's Fev Delicious. Now this is actually a Tonka heavy fragrance as well. So similar to Tonka Imperial, but it's more of a cherry vibe in here. There's lots more going on. But it's the Tonka bean in here that makes it powdery. Sweet, powdery, delicious, marzipan-y. Also a bit boozy. Also smells expensive. Also has that lovely, classy edge. So that is Feb Delicious. Next I've got a Tom Ford. This is Velvet Orchid. I can't remember any of the notes. I'm really sorry. Um, It's... Typically Tom Ford and it's got that dirty patchouli kind of thing going on But there's something powdery in here like if there's a dirty patchouli a bit like you have with the black orchid But this one has soft up florals like powdery florals and even if there's no iris and no violet in here It may as well have because for me it dries down into a really lovely powdery floral with that still with that hint of dirty patchouli So it's called velvet orchid and I can imagine there being a velvety, it's a velvety scent, a velvety texture, but like a dirty velvet. That's how I see this one. Slightly spicy, um, 
yeah it's a bit brief because i don't know the notes so it's not fair for me to go on, on about it but it has got a powdery dry down on my skin so that is why i've included it so next is one from sp parfums and the name i think pretty much sums it up powder and dust so powder and dust is created by yana from tom and lisa this is her creation and she created this in collaboration with sp parfums this is her baby and it is absolutely beautiful this was a love at first sniff now again another one that I was able to come by through Claire. So yes, this is powdery, but there's so much more. For me, it is so delicious. Like I smell crumble, like literal crumble, like you'd have as a you know apple crumble, rhubarb crumble, and it's sweet enough that you've got custard in there as well. So there are, I think there's mimosa in here. You've got fruity notes. I think it's like a, a warm apple or something. I'm getting, and then there's also a champagne accord in here. So it's a bit of a sparkling one as well. And it's, got, it's all that. It's like powdery and sweet and fizzy and fruity. And it's just delicious. Thanks again, Claire. Love powder and dust. SP Parfums. So aside from the powdery iris, the powdery violet, powdery tonka bean, powdery musk, we've also got powdery rice. And a lovely example of that is Ormond Jane's Privé. So Privé, I've kind of fallen in love with and she is on my wish list. It's weightless in a way where it sits above your skin and stays with you like a little cloud. And there is sandalwood in here. I think there's a bit of pepper. There's that rice note. You've got this orris root, which of course is giving you that dry, powdery density. And what this makes me think of is if, if you're, you've gone into a kitchen where someone has cooked a rice pudding with nutmeg, definitely nutmeg, and it's perhaps this kitchen's made from sandalwood, you know, the cupboards and whatnot. But you've got this aftermath of scent, like it's in the air. You've got this rice pudding with nutmeg in the air with the woods. And it's that, but it's so airy and, and delicate and angelic. And there's a, an iris, interestingly, that's growing in my mum's garden. It's beautiful, enormous yellow iris. And I, of course, being a fragranced head... I had to stick my nose in there just to see if I could smell anything, and I did. And what that smelled like is what this smells like. This airy, creamy nutmeg. Really, really beautiful. And that association is probably what pushed me to really fall for this fragrance. It's got a bit of a green touch to it as well. When you first spray this, it just feels like it's disappearing in the air, but actually it's not, and it does stay with you, and you have to trust in it that it is giving off this beautiful sillage. So that is Privé, and actually looking at this little daisy here, if, da if a daisy had a scent, I think it would be something like Privé. I'm looking at this, and looking at this, I'm thinking, do you know what, I can imagine this is the scent of this little daisy, of that little green touch, but with this kind of milky nutmeg, I don't know. So that is Privé. I think it's time for a bit of rose territory. So this is Elie Saab Essence Number 1 Rose. And another one I can either or I can either thank Claire or blame her for because she's responsible for me buying this one as well. This is not one I enjoyed when I first when I first tried it, but I'm so pleased I stuck with it because I really love this fragrance. Now it really grew on me. This is a really powdery rose, and I've looked on Fragrantica for notes. You just got five roses. As all it's showing you is five different roses. So I don't know where this powd really powdery scent is coming from. Perhaps it is the rose. <sighs> just the, the most expensive luxurious rose talcum powder it's like rose dust like really sweet rose dust you know the dust that you that kind of dusty um sugar you get on turkish delight it's that pretty much but if you imagine a little rose flower fairy and she's throwing magic fairy dust everywhere this is what this would smell like because that's what it is it's rose powder it's rose dust but it's super beautiful, it's super pretty. And it's the sweetness I find really addictive. It's a really beautiful sweetness in here. I love this bottle, it is so flipping heavy. It's such a quality bottle. But anyway, so that is Ellie Saab's Essence Number One Rose. Making a bit more room there. So we're going into some gourmand territory here. And let's start with Mansara. And this is Roses and Chocolate. This is quite an unusual fragrance. Definitely one that needs to be sampled first. And it is powdery, and the chocolate in here is the powdery element. There's also a soapy element in here. Um, the rosiness, I think, is quite soapy. Like a rose soap, but the chocolate is powdery. Yeah, like cocoa powder, so it's like a dark chocolate that's just powdery and dusty. 
It's got a sweetness to it, but it's not your typical gourmand. It's not a rich, you know, luscious chocolate. So yeah, roses and chocolate, that's one I consider to be a powdery fragrance. So another gourmand, super, 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 super sexy, sexy, sexy gourmand. Oud Bouquet, Lancôme. Everyone's heard of this fragrance by now. It is, a, it is a gourmand, but it is also quite powdery. I think, interestingly, smelling this right now, after smelling Elisab, the same powdery sweet rose, I think, is sort of, you know, being shared in both of these. You've got saffron, you've got oud, you've also got praline. It is so sweet, it's so decadent, it's so beautiful this one but there is a lovely powderiness in here and it's coming through a little bit dry it's a real beautiful eastern gourmand rose super sexy but definitely there's a powdery element running through this so that is the beautiful oud bouquet so another powdery gourmand this is from hugo boss this is hugo boss the scent this is the private accord and this is the one that smells like mandarins and chocolate but it is very subtle it's very light and it is powdery so the chocolate in here a bit like roses and chocolate the chocolate is very powdery and this is more milk chocolate this is more got that more slightly bitter dark chocolate this one is more milky so it's super light this one it's not a heavy gourmand or it's very very easy to wear you've got that kind of mandarin opening but it's not big bright and juicy it's like a it's more like it's flavored with mandarin and you quickly get that kind of powdery um airy airy fairy powdery chocolate coming through so yeah that is hugo boss that's pretty linear that one but it is easy to wear and it is really enjoyable so yeah hugo boss private accord right guys so we're nearly there so next up is blue lazuli from armani Privé. And I've always expressed a lot of love for this fragrance. It's just so super posh and super beautiful. What I get from this is never reflective of the notes. The notes, I always forget, but there's woods note, woodsy notes, there's spicy notes. I know there's a lovely note of cardamom in here. Um, but I always think of the same thing. And that is powdery florals, specifically violet. And I know there's none in here. But it's just what I get on my skin. It turns into this beautiful powdery but evanescent powder, like sherbet, evanescent y powdery floral. The spices are really, really subtle, and the powder is soft. It's a soft, so beautiful, soft powdery floral. Mm, mature, sweet, a bit fizzy. Oh, I just love this one. So that's Blue Lazulite by, by Armani Privé. Well, I've saved the grandest one till the end. This one is sweet. It's powdery, it's luxurious, it's also a bit royal, it's covered in fingerprints. <laughs> this is Oud Satin Mood by Maison Francis Kojan. Rose, it's Oud, it's violet. I think there's some bergamot in here, I could be wrong. I can't remember all the notes. Look at all those fingerprints. Um, it's rich, it's decadent, it's super bombastic. The Oud is slightly medicinal, even slightly like petrol very slightly and the rose is sweet but the violet is coming through with powderiness and it just takes it in a whole other direction from other rose and ouds i think if it wasn't for the violet in here i'd find it very hard to wear it'd be too strong or just too sharp for me i like that it's softened out with that beautiful violet note it's more velvety it's like a, it's like the rose and oud is sitting on a velvet cushion it's so beautiful but it is a powdery content just deep, dark, sexy and gothic. That is Oud Satin Mood. So that's it, guys. Those are all the fragrances I have that I consider to be powdery or at least have a powdery personality. So what is your favourite powdery fragrance? I'd love to know. Let me know down below. And I'm going to leave you all there. I shall hope to see you again on my next one. Take care. Stay safe. Over and out.